uh, and today I'm just going to paint a small pastel oops, from this reference image here. It's just some lovely reflections, uh, strip of land, water, a little bit of reflection in the spit there and a couple of pelicans with some more water in front and grasses. So I'll be painting that, I'll put the picture up on my blog and I apologise for not posting every week at the moment. I'm getting ready for an exhibition, so it's just taken up a lot of my time. And I did do you one for last week, but when I went to edit it, I've set the camera up in a different way, and when I went to edit it, my fat head was in the way most of the time, so I had to scrap that one, and it was a pretty good demonstration of a really large painting, so I'm very sorry about that. Um, we'll just get on with this one, though. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use my box of... Terry Ludwig, Terry Ludwig landscape pastels. For this one I'm going to use my box of Terry Ludwig landscape pastels and my box of Unison, which is a British brand. Fantastic. And that's the landscape, the 72 landscape set. And just a few odd um, hard sticks of Conte crayons. Uh, I'm going to just brush in some of the darker areas because I've chosen a very uh, light mushroomy colour. Um, I just need to get that picture back up again because I lost it. Here we go. And I'll just sit it there. You may or may not. Let's try and set this up so. Let's just zoom in a little bit. So I'll just start with putting in the, the strip of land there with something dark. I'm using the unisons for this because they're quite a, a hard pastel. It's going to come about a third of the way down there. So I'm just putting in across there with, as I said, a, a unison dark and they're pine trees, a, street, a stand of pine trees there in the background. I'm just using very dark uh, blue and browns there. Um, I, um, there'll be a more lighter colour here in the foreground. I'm just going to pop that in briefly there to tell me where I'm going. And then down lower, there, that's the redder colours that are coming in. I've got the paper just clipped onto a piece of foam core, so there's a little bit of a bounce under it and it's not quite so noisy when I put the pastel on for you. And there I go. Just washing that in water. So I've got a, quite a good dynamic range there already. I'm just going to give that little yellow strip a wash in as well. So I've got quite a good dynamic range there. The values are set for me. And now I'm just going to start going in with um, the pastels. I'll start with the sky. Um, I'd like a little bit of a glow to the sky. So I'm just going to start with a light yellowy sort of colour. It's a unison stick. I'm snapping it in half because I want to work with a smaller piece. And I'm just starting by running it on its side all the way down the lower part of the... Not worrying if I run it into the trees a bit. I just want to get in. If I run it into the trees a bit it'll just help them to have a little bit of on them. So that's just the start to give it a bit of a glow down in the sky there. Uh, I'm going to start putting some blues in now so I'll start with some pale blues, another unison pale blue. I'm just rub that straight into the yellows I've got underneath and it does make a 
slight greeny tinge to it, but I'm not fussed by that. That's what it's ultimately going to do is just to show us a, a bit of a, a glow on the horizon there. So there I've put a light blue in, and now I'm going to come in with a little bit darker blue. And this one is a Richard McKinley blue. And run that through, and you can see the texture of the paper showing through there, where it's not catching at all. I'm just taking that all the way along there. And quite a bit of the mushroomy, sort of warm mushroom colour underneath shows through, and I don't mind that. It gives it a really warm sparkle to the sky. Summer day, summer sky. If I did want to worry about that, I would just take the side of my finger and rub it all along there, but I actually quite like that. And if I if I leave enough in the water and on the bank, it's going to really unite that. I might just put a little bit more on, not too much, but just a little bit. And I'm calling that sky done. Now I'm going to just be working my way down so that as the pastel drops off, it's not going to drop onto areas that I've already done. You can see it's dropped off a little bit there. With my little table easel, I can slant it slightly forward with my French easel, I can slant it slightly forward so that as the dust falls, it just falls down into the dust trap rather than onto the paper but not with this one. So now where I'm going this at this point is doing this little land mass here with the trees. If I were to put something in there I might be able to sit that up a bit higher for you so you can see it. I'm just a lump of wood sitting around so let's try putting that in there just to raise that up a little bit. Uh, there we go. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better. I just don't want it going flying, so I think we'll have to do without it. Uh, and I'll just post the pic for you. Okay, so now I'm just going to put that in. I'm going to start with the background trees there. There's a little hill here. A bit of a hill bit there, so I'm just going to put that into to start with and just reinstate that foreground line there. Uh, and I don't want it to be quite that brightly yellow, so I'll take one of these. Just going for another blue pale sort of yellow in a couple of places there. Okay, so that's going to be that spit of land there. There'll be a little bit of that coming. I'm just going to put it in now around, around not too much there, just a little bit. Right, now the trees are going in. I'm going to start again with the, um, the deep blue that I was using, the unison one. So there it is, a deep blue. And I'll go in first with that. And I'll be going back in with some greens as well, but I just wanted to start with the, the deep blue. And it won't go so as deep as it did in the first place over this um, the lighter sky that I've put in, but that's okay. And I'm just going to do a little bit of jabbing here around the the skyline so it's not too sharp. These are pines over here but these are gum trees, eucalyptus trees here so they'll have a different shape top. That's what I'm putting in now, just the loose tops. I'm just varying up that um, skyline there. So there we go, along like so. And 
and just a little bit different, more spiky at tops here because they're the, the pine trees. I obviously don't want all the same colour, I want a few different colours in there just to mix it up. But I'm going to start with this deep blue um, and then I actually need to come down a little bit closer to the So I'm just putting it in, dragging them down a little bit, across there, varying them up a little bit so that the, the grasses go up and into the trees a bit and it's not just straight across there. So that's the tree line and there'll be just a few more here. I'm just putting in some... What I'm going to do now is add in some different colours there. So I've, I'm going to put in this light a little bit of a, a ready colour and then a more looking for a, a green that I want to try. Put a little bit of this green there. It's a fairly neutral kind of green, a bit of a greyed out green which goes well for, for gum trees and just dotting that on some trees, not a lot of in individual trees standing out here so just jabbing on the colour. Use here, I'll just have a little bit of a play that's not quite the right colour but I think this will be too much purpley colour so I don't really want that but what I might do is just start off and give it one line along there with that and then see if the combination works for me what I'm going to do at this stage is just check my seascapes block and my Great American artworks. People ask, do I not put them all out and mix them up? And I do. I, I take some of them out and mix them up into my general box. But it's quite nice to have a box that's seascape, a box that's landscape, and then it's much easier to find the colours that you want straight away. Uh, I'm just going to try that one. That's more of the colour I'm after there. A really bright sea blue there. I'm going to bring that down to that line. I'm trying to leave some of that sparkle from the mushroom coloured paper underneath. I'd like to get that in. Now I don't want it just again I don't want it just to be the one sky colour there. Uh, and I do want it to be a sort of brighter blue. So I'm just looking for a colour that I might like to use for it. What I'll do is take a sort of turquoise in it as well to give it a happier with that colour now. Now down through here, it's all actually going to be reflection, so I probably should have put that much of that water in. Just rubbing it in now, and I'm going to start putting in some of the reflection colours there. And they'll be quite dark. Uh, they're the, the trees from up here, so I'm just going to pull it down like so. There's a little bit of it comes along here as well. And 
I'm just pulling that down into the water. The reflections, dark reflections have cover some of it up with, to make it look a little bit more natural by cover, covering some of it up with. kind of a dark edge here where it makes the water dripping back into there and I'm just going to put a whole lot of different colours in letting them blend into each other so that I get The smooth wet sand there and some of some of it rippling out showing through the, the water there as it comes in it's not sort of just a hard edge of sand it's got little pockets of water down here there's a quite a lot of water and that's going to be sky reflections again so you know come with water just overlaying this reflecting the sky colour. I would like to have a little bit of the darks running through that too uh, because it's just little patches of, of this darker chocolatey soil showing through here areas and I'll bring that colour more into the foreground. So we're getting some really good darks and dynamics set up there. And some more of the water showing through here, but it's actually a darker blue now. So I'm trying to find a. Might use my little contact blue again for a bit darker watercolour through here. And it's just again showing through the. But it's catching in the little dips and hollows of that. Quite dark over there, the water is. And then we've got a, a very solid sort of dark edge to the sand there. It's in fact I think a sewage pipe but I don't want to put that in. <laughs> so I'm taking a bit of artistic liberty and just making the edge a little bit darker. And here where the pelicans are going to be against the dark background. This area has got a little bit of vegetation on it and it's got uh, some samphire I think. So what I'm going to do is give it a little really light, just drag across really light of a, a green. That's a sort of olive green. So I'm dragging across there and then I'm going to go across with the ready kind of colour. That will be the samphire there. And just let that sort of organically flow back there. And I do need to have some light sort of sand around the edges of that. So here it comes in. I'm going to use the same colour just to go back in here and put a few little lights on there 
that will help just to tie it together. So that's sort of sand edge coming around there. There will be some more vegetation just coming down into that sand edge. So I'm just going to give it some some of the same green I used back here. But I'm also going to give it quite a bit of a dark on this shadow side, just to give it a bit of form and volume. So I'm just using a dark blue in here on the sides of it. And just around the where the sand and the, and the sand fiery kind of meet, I'm giving it a dark edge as well. Once I've given it the dark edge, I'll go back in with my sand and just pick up anything, sort of sharpen it up, clean it up a little bit. And I need to give it a, a little bit more lighter top as well there. So I'm just taking a few touches of lights through there. to have a bit of light catching the edge of it and I will take that uh, just on blue in there I'm going to actually put a bit of a purpley color in there as well a really purple so it's not just blue and the, the red and the purple was sort of is complementary to the, the greens. So that's gone in. Now I'm just going to go back in with the greens again. just so it's not just in one spot. Again I'll give that a little bit of a of that really purpley colour and then I'll give it a bit of a, a lighter top. Just a few jabs in there, a little suggestion of something else. There's probably a few little rocks out there as well. Uh, and I might put them in as a kind of transition between this area and that area. So just some suggestions of rocks. Maybe one or two out here as well. Really they don't they don't do much more than just a few little jabs of another colour against the, the background there. And they will read as rocks. I'm going to settle them in, sort of bed them into that ground by giving them a darker colour underneath them. But not too dark. So this will probably be a, a mid brown that will just give them Of shadow where they're sitting on the sand. And back in here, it can probably afford to be a little bit darker back in there because um, the surrounding grass is quite dark, so that's better. So now I've put a few little rocks in. I've got the grasses, the green grasses. I need to do some more work up there, but not just yet. I'm just stepping back to it to have another look. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of an extra different blue in there. And 
and then we come into the bright blues down here again and that's the sky blue so going back to the sky blue and I'm just going to take that a little across here leave a little bit of it running to there so that's the sky blue again uh, letting some of the mushroomy colour come through I'm going to pop in a little bit of a variety in there as well which is another darker blue over as well and I'm going to take my dark blues and just put a little bit more a couple of strips as it runs reflections run in here as well Just adding in a little bit more reflection there. And I want to add in something other than just the blue, so I'm going to add in a bit of a green as well, just in spots. Be a little bit uh, darker around that area there, so I'm just using a darker brown sort of colour and then scraping it across to leave some of the others coming through. So it's time for the pelicans. Actually, I want to lighten that up a little bit too. So let's put a little bit of too fussy with these I just want to get them in the right sort of position which is about there and body of the pelican oops that's not really his body and then the head of the pelican like that this pelican is actually on the water so that's the general shapes Now I just need to add in some darker colours. I'm going to be using the little Ponte's sticks for these so I can get in black wing there. Down with this. Let's trim that off a bit. That's his beak. Refine the head a little bit. Head coming down into a beak. Head. 
<laughs> coming down to a beat, that's a bit too much of a beat, but that's okay because I'm just going to keep working at it. That's a bit of beak. Using a Conte crayon, the same colour as the water, to just sort of sculpt it a little bit there. And it's got, um, it's got a white neck coming down there. needs to be a bit fatter there. What I need to do now is go and have a look at some images of pelicans and get that. Touches on the pelicans here. I also need to put the little little um, legs in. Get myself a really white white. soft white is what I'm after so I can actually leave a bit of white on the pelican there. I'm just going back into it again. Thanks for joining me for this demonstration of two pelicans in a lagoon area and I think it's got that nice uh, seaside feel and I like the two little pelicans as a focal point there. Thanks for joining me, see you next time. Bye for now.